Hey, hey, here we are, Chris. Week two of these chats. Creative marketing, kind of a soft title, not really uh, anything too official, but I think we have a little uh, little bit of branding with this thing rolling. Yeah, I think so too. This is uh, this is going, and we're having some fun, and people are learning stuff. So let's keep sharing it. What's uh, what's this week's topic? Man, we're gonna talk sales. Not always the funnest thing in the world, but uh, pretty important. Pretty important. Yeah, no, I agree. Sales are uh, man, sales can be tough until you learn how to sell correctly. But once you do, sales get really fun because you start generating revenue, you start making more money. And it all happens by simply just having conversations with people that need your product or need your service. And that's a really cool thing to start selling to people who need it because it not only helps your business, but it also helps their business at the same time, which gives you more customers. Yeah, that's the thing. And I like how you brought up like just conversation. And, and that's the big thing. Once you develop a relationship for somebody and find out their needs, I mean, you're, you're gifting them your service. It's mm -hmm. a good thing, you know? ideally right you're not uh shoving it in anybody's face hopefully you shouldn't be and yeah, um, yeah that's a good way to look at it yeah see i've I've never really had well i've had the most best luck with sales by simply not trying to sell by just like having a conversation with people and then sprinkling in what i do or just like inquiring what they do if they're in business you know what kind of business and so forth getting to know them because it's essentially to me like a game of trust and the more that this person knows about you and the more that they start to trust you, the more they get interested in you as a person. And once you start, you know, sharing what you do, if your business is a big part of you, then you start selling like indirectly to them. And then you can see if something aligns or not without just walking in somewhere and being like, hey, I create marketing videos. Here's my card if you need some. Have a good day. Like, I don't think that works too well. No, that's that's brutal. <laughs> and and the other side doesn't really appreciate it, honestly, even if they need that. Mm -hmm. they're probably going to be turned off a little bit if you come at them that aggressively. So mm -hmm. it, it takes some time. You need to warm people up to it. And when it, when it happens organically, you know, that's the best way to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want to get started with um, some, some problems that we had in, you know, sales early on? You oh, think man. that might spark the interest? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think, oh, uh, you know, personally, what I did is I would try to go in and my number one intention was to sell them like no matter what. And that was like the the epic failure that just getting slapped in the face of that. No, 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 no. Over and over again. And it really started to like hurt the ego at that point. You know, it wasn't it wasn't just like, oh, no, it was just like a, you couldn't even get past the gatekeeper, which I essentially learned like in the tricks of how I sell now is like kind of hanging around spots or getting to know people get you in past that gatekeeper, because if somebody's there and managers like don't let anybody pass you know i'm busy you know if that person touched your friend or you can't even sell them like you're not even getting to the person who's gonna say yes you know no exactly and that's i have some other points to get to but that's kind of the first thing it's really good that you bring up like a lot of times people talk about this it's like it's like the rule of proximity like you want to be close as close to your ideal clientele as possible like be where mm -hmm. they are and that creates those opportunities because you're already around those people. So mm -hmm. like if you're, um, oh man, if you're wanting to work in say uh, the health space or like you're wanting to work with fitness people, mm -hmm. like being involved in the gym life and being around in, in those areas, those conversations are just going to come up organically over time. Yeah. But, you know, and a lot of people fall into the trap these days of, just trying to do everything digitally. But I think actually being physically in person around mm -hmm. people is very beneficial. And you kind of separate yourself these days because a lot of people aren't doing that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. See, I think that's something you or I are uh, actually one of my buddies who's in sales was talking about is like, you know, digital sales is so high right now that everybody's doing it and they're trying to sell as quick as they can, send in emails where if you actually are going door to door now, you probably have a higher conversion because you're bringing back like the physicalness. And even though if you're in a digital product or a digital world, being physical with it, I think it's so important, especially early on. Because with all the scams and everything with the word free being thrown around, like as soon as people start to feel you and your essence, and if you're truly aligned to like what you are selling, people will feel it and will want to jump on board with it. Yeah, totally. And it, it's so hard to stand out mm -hmm. online. I mean, 
And, and that's kind of the fun challenge of what we do because in our services, like we do need to find ways to stand out. So I think we do have an advantage in figuring that mm -hmm. out, but for most people, it's really tough. So if you can get in person, actually help people like get to know you and share your personality, that's, mm -hmm. that's a big thing that's super underestimated. For sure. Do you want to go into the topic of, I don't know if this, this hits for you um, as much as it does for me, but making that small cell early gets you the bigger cells later on. Yeah. I like that. Um, Dude, that's like the biggest. Yeah. So, so I sell videos. Well, I drop an example. So I can sell a video from like 1500 to like five grand, right? My first thing is not to sell the video. It's to sell the filming and then sprinkle in the video because filming's cheaper. And even if they can't do that, like, Hey, do you guys want to start with a photo shoot? Start with something very, very minimal that just gets the trust one that you can sell it quick delivery over deliver if you can. And then you create a relationship and then you can start selling more to these people. Now you're like, Hey, let's do a video next time. Or, Hey, let's knock out a couple of videos. Let's knock out some content. Let's do a retainer. Let's keep generating money and generating services, you know? <laughs> oh, for sure. And this actually brings, brings up something that I was wanting to talk about, like going into this call. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, for me, it's a little bit different, but I was a little off on my approach in the first place. And it's a big mistake. I think people do all the time. It's uh -huh. like going into a conversation with somebody with like one thing in mind that this person will need this yeah. and being and kind of boxing yourself in. Right. Mm -hmm. And you really need to go into conversations with an open mind, like, Pretend you have no idea what this person needs and just be interested in them and what they're about. And then you can find your way in the door. So maybe you find that small sale just yeah. through good conversation and figuring out what they they actually need. Because mm -hmm. if I'm going into a meeting like, oh, they, they need Google advertising. This is exactly what they're going to get from me. And I'm going to land this deal. And I'm so focused on that one specific service. You can be closed off and miss keys and cues that come up in the conversation where maybe there's something I would have missed and could have gotten my foot in the door, mm -hmm. but I was so focused on this one service, you know, I could have missed potential clients. Yeah. I think, and what you're getting at too is, is kind of in a book I read too, but if our perspective is this narrow, we can't see all this stuff out here that could make us potentially a lot of money, which um, it's called mirroring is what I've learned to do. And I got this from the book, Never Split the Difference um, by Chris Voss. And it really talks about like going in and conversing with people and negotiating and simply just going in and it's called uh, mirroring. So it's wherever you ask him a question. So I could ask Brady, hey, how's your day doing? He's like, it's going pretty well. So I'd mirror that by saying three words or two to three words summarizing what he says and be like, what's going well about your day? And then he subconsciously starts dropping information, but all we're doing is starting a conversation and he's leading me to where we're trying to go to see if there's a potential sell there or not. And it's yeah, such a it's, cool tactic. Yeah. And this guy, this guy was an FBI negotiator, but he knows how to get people talking. And that's the most important part. That's a hundred percent. Right. If you're going into a conversation for somebody that is like a potential client and really mm -hmm. just anything in life, don't be the person talking the most. Exactly. You that never want to be most, the person talking the most. That is the most important because as soon as you're listening, you're learning. And as long as you can empathetically return a response, people feel, feel heard. And as soon as they feel heard, they start to just open up and then they'll share their problems with you. And that gives you the opportunity to jump on a solution or to create a solution. Exactly. And that's kind of a preview of what it would be like working for you. It's like, oh, this guy actually cares. He'll listen to me. Yeah. And, um, and people love to hear themselves talk too. So a lot of times they'll leave the conversation thinking so highly of you. Like, oh man, that guy was great. I love talking mm -hmm. to him. And you spoke 10% of the time, but they just got to hear themselves talk, which is what they want. For sure. Um, you ready to switch? I got one more. I got one more yeah, of my sleep yeah. for this conversation. So I think one of the most important parts of sell that selling that gets overlooked is freaking over delivering to the clients that you have through the referral. So Ooh. in business so far, I haven't had to do too much outreach and sales. I could probably have more sales, but a lot of my clientele in my first two, three years of business has come from referrals, which is like, I think the best sales method, because if you're, if you have this clientele, a, they're going to return 
B, they're going to tell their friends and everybody has friends who always need services. So then they're networking and they become your salespeople because you've really done a good job delivering to them. Plus, now you can go out and anybody you have lunch with or you meet at the gym, the club, the pool, you could also be selling for yourself too by simply having conversations. So I think that is the most overlooked method of selling is just simply delivering and treating your customers with a really, really high amount of just respect and just being very professional with what you say you're going to do. 100%. And a side note on that, have you ever had situations where like, you haven't had the best client experience with somebody and you finish that work relationship and then somebody involved in that project like starts referring you out to somebody else, but you know how bad this one went. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, I've turned down some roles because, yeah, you know, you, you experience a situation once and you kind of get a taste of it and same person involved in, a different situation and I'll just avoid that one. Yeah. And I think that's the reverse of selling is learning to fire your customers and fire their networks. I think that's what you're getting at. Cause there is that wherever you sell yeah. and you're like, God, that person was not my favorite. And I really didn't, you know, resonate with that project or the energy or, you know, stuff started getting twisted in it. So if that person referred me from another one, I mean, my, my radar is up and I'm like, you know, people are friends with people like them. And, you know, most of the time I'll give it a chance, but I'll also like fill into it and be like, do I want to sell my service here? Yes. I, I'd like to think I've actually gotten pretty good at this over the years. Mm -hmm. And like, so if you're somebody that's working with me, you've, you've made it through like, and you know, you wouldn't know this if you're working with me now, but there are a lot of steps for me as the servicer to be able to trust the client because it works both ways. Mm -hmm. And there have been people I've let go. There have been situations where I've actually like, downgraded my service for clients because certain aspects of what I do weren't being appreciated and it was killing my, you know, earnings Mm -hmm. and potential. Um, and we're just, you know, huge time wasters, honestly. Um, and if you have good relationships with people and you know how to navigate that, you can really like clear your headspace and your situation so that you're only working with like people you want to work with doing what you want to do. And that's where you can ultimately find the most success. So mm-hmm. be picky. Obviously, early on, that's that's tougher to do. But over time, like know who your ideal client is. And that's that's pretty big. Yeah, I think I think that's huge. Something I want to ask you, I want to get your perspective of this. So say you sell your services at, let's just say, $1,000 is easy to work with. Somebody can't afford your services, but you think they're going to be a really good client and they have something to teach you or help your business grow or have a really good network. Is that something that you would discount your services to in order to work with that? Or is it better just to keep your set like $1,000 per client? Yeah, I I think that's a slippery slope as much as you would like to discount yourself, like for the potential opportunity. Mm-hmm. My recommendation in that situation is, and is kind of what I do, is like, say they have a five hundred dollar budget. Um, you find a way to only do fifty percent of the work. Yeah, you have to somehow like shift it down, and it's all about the ratios. Mm-hmm. Like, and and it's tough. I mean, I charge based on execution. And I, I really don't track my hours too much because it can just drive you crazy. And it's all about results at For the end sure. of the day anyway. But you do need to understand like hourly mm-hmm. how much you're bringing in like for the work you're doing. Um, yeah. So you, you just, you can't give into that too much. Now that's a great point. And that's something like my general basis of videos, I have my price range, but essentially what I've started doing is like hourly in my head, of how much it's going to take to shoot, you know, drive, set up, break down, edit. And I have my hourly rate and I'll adjust that. So if somebody can't afford my, um, you know, budget or my proposal and they would say like, Hey, we're going to go down to, this is what we can only do half. And then that's where I'll like deliver half. So if it was a minute and a half video, cool. We're on like 45 second video and we're going to crunch it in. And if they don't like that, they tend to raise their budget back up with it. It's, yeah. it's kind of cool. It's like the okay, yeah, we can do that, but here's what we're going to have to do. And then they kind of like keep the sentence going or like, well, actually, I think we can afford that. We're going to go back mm-hmm. up to there, you know? Yeah, man, sometimes it's a test. 
Uh huh. You know, they're yes. negotiating. Mm hmm. Yeah, negotiating. I think though, back to that, it's like the biggest part of sales. Just how to keep the conversation going. And something I picked up from uh, who is it? Cody Sanchez this week, a YouTuber. Do you follow her at yeah. all? Yeah. Dude, she sure. dropped a bomb and was like, "Never say no. Say yes and." So in that situation, yeah. somebody's like, "Oh, we can only do two thousand instead of four thousand. All right, well, I can do two thousand, and we're gonna cut the video in half because that's half of my budget. So is that something you're willing to work with? Bam, you just mirrored it right back to them, and now they're the ones who have to choose, but you just countered with their counter. Yeah, it's a positive dialogue. People want to hear yeses. So mm -hmm. you drop a yes first, throw in a little and rather than a but actually, which I think is pretty smart as well. Yeah. So I like that. Um question for you have you noticed over the years that you've been able to simplify your offer versus at the beginning uh, yeah where it might have been a little more complicated and harder to get a yes yeah so something that i've done recently and it's it's kind of what you were tapping into earlier was the uh, performance based so big on that so people ask me what i do now i say i i create videos that make you more money than you spend on them period and it so it's a simple way to say I create advertising and marketing videos. But when they hear advertising and marketing, they think cost money, money, money and video. But it's like, hey, I'm a digital investor. The money you invest into me, I return at a higher rate. And that's through the form of video and amplifying the services that you do. No matter what I'm saying, I'm keeping it very, very simple. But I'm also amplifying or bringing more value to the conversation with how I'm selling it. Never do you hear me what I cost. And it's always like, we're going to generate more revenue. And that's something that, you yep. know, anything that I do is always, and we spoke about this on the last video, it's like, it's so value-based to be in video. And in the space that I'm in, you have to help generate money for people with what you're doing because they don't want you to be a cost. They want you to be something that contributed to revenue. Yeah. And that, I'd say that's even more so with me. It's all in the data. Like mm -hmm. if I put together some bad months, I'm out. And I understand that. And that's fair. Yeah. Um, and I mean, for that reason, like, I don't even push people to sign long-term contracts. Like mm -hmm. I just ask for a month's notice. If it's not working out, then that's my fault. So yeah. it's as simple as that. And, and for me, like, and it, I think it's a lot of the same way with you. It's like creating opportunity to scale with someone as they find you as mm -hmm. an investment. So it's kind yeah. of that switch. You have to get them to and really prove it to them actually that you mm -hmm. are an investment and not a cost. Yep. So like with mine, it's, um, it's just a percentage of ad spend. And the more you spend with me, the less percentage I keep. So it just enhances your investment even more as time mm -hmm. goes on. So we can scale with you rather than, you know, try to overcomplicate it or charge on something that's not results driven. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, I think people appreciate that too. Just being like straightforward about it and mm -hmm. like understanding their point of view also. Yep. No, exactly. That's, that's the biggest part is literally just like understanding that point of view and then really just keeping it simple and providing value. Yeah. And that's, that sells in a nutshell, right? Yeah. And having a good conversation. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it's nice being friendly. People appreciate that too. And um, if you have a bad month, a lot of times that helps, you know, if you're uh, not so pleasant to work with, you probably have a really short, short leash. Yeah. So <laughs> you better yeah. perform. Very true. Very true. So, uh, you have any stories? I'm trying to think of some, I'm trying to think some about sales experience. Um, the last two sales I've done, I haven't heard back from yet, but they went really well. So for instance, I went and shot at this restaurant the other day in Leewood Town Square. Then I had a meeting across the street with uh, my men my uh, the person I'm mentoring and business coaching as a creative. And we were talking about sales and I'm, I'm motivating him. And then I was like, you know what? I got a business card. I'm going to go up to this counter and just give you a real sweet delivery of what it is. So I went up and was like, hey, my name's Chris. I create content for brands. I make videos that make you more money than you spend on them. I just finished up shooting across the street at Bamboo Pennies. If you'd like to see what my work looks like, it's on their website. I'll be updating it shortly. But here's my card in case you guys are wanting any content. I would love to shoot this coffee shop. I've been focusing on coffee shop, bars, and restaurants. And this is one of my favorite spots. 
And then I was like, you know, thank you very much. And, you know, have a good day. You got any questions and so forth. And it was just like a quick, swift delivery because that one didn't have the time for that conversational piece like we talked about. It was more of like, oh, we got to we got to be in and out. But like, here's a real quick pitch to give you a little sauce. Yeah, that's kind of a tough situation. But Mm -hmm. in in your position there, like. You need to give them enough to create another conversation. Mm-hmm. That's really what that is. If, if you're short on time and, and that happens, people are busy. Like so, sometimes you just have to get your foot in the door. And my sales with that was one, I brought somebody there to meet Two, I've been there a couple of times and three was just like the, the place across the street is such a good restaurant. That's always full. So it's a really good, like, Hey, they trust me and they're always packed. And you can see my portfolio piece very quickly. So it was like a, that was more of the sell there than the conversation and get to know him and so forth. Whereas like a couple of weeks prior, I was at a coffee shop down here in the river market and I'd been going there for about, I don't know, probably two or three weeks, just working there every day, sitting at the bar, getting to know the people, like creating, like getting in that space and meeting a lot of people there anyways. So went up to the water thing one day and saw that guy who's been working there and his name was Nick. And I was like, Hey man, I see you here all the time. What's your name? Started a conversation and got it flowing. And then he asked what I did. And I was like, dude, I create, you know, videos for restaurants and for companies and so forth and this and that. And he's like, man, we've been, we've been actually thinking about some content. I'm like, Oh, well dude, here's my card. Like, check me out. Uh, if you guys need any portfolio pieces, please send them, but they're already on my website with some images. So, um, ended up getting the owner's email too. So, and he, he's just like, here, if you want to reach the owner, here's his email. Like he threw me everything I needed. And I used that mirroring technique and was just like, he's just going on. And I was like, well, what's it like being a barista? Like, oh, asking all these open end questions, but they continually created that space for him to like feel the trust. And then they're like, oh, you know, here's my boss's email. That's the best way to reach him. Yeah. And I was like, I like shoot. That. I like that. All right. Well, that was simple. So those are two very different ones, but they were really good. Like, I feel like after every time I sell, I'm either like, oh, that was terrible. Or I was like, man, that was good. Both of those was like, man, I crushed that. Can't wait to get that call. So. Yeah, man. It's funny Ooh. for me, like thinking back, it's always the uh, the bad ones that stand out and are probably more interesting anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Do you want to bring up one that uh, we combined with that? didn't exactly go too well yeah well hey actually i got one more one more before we go there my third i like to say three so the uh the other one was this lady who got passed on to me from another client uh motivational speaker same market so she told me what she wanted after i talked to her it was probably like a 45 minute conversation more just talking about like what she's into who i've worked with what i'm into and we align and we're both like we both like travel, we both like adventure, and we both like motivational and through transformation. And I'm like, this is a dope client. I want it. So to make sure I could land it, I went to her website and searched for other things to add value to. So um, I was just doing a filming and a minute and a half edit and was going to have to travel for it. And then I was like, all right, oh, this bid's a little up there. I don't know her budget. I went to her website and was like, eh, she needs some more pictures. They're a little low resolution. So on my bid... I didn't itemize it. I just put what was all included in the proposal with the complimentary branding photos because we're going to be out there shooting video anyways. You know, what's a couple stills and a couple, you know, edits to like update our website with. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't something that she mentioned, but it was such a good just like little thing to sprinkle in there to add more value. And I learned and, and to like on top. transition this it's from the cell that we're going to talk about we i learned all these methods of selling from this one that <laughs> didn't go so well for us downtown yeah no and you brought up research which you probably should have talked on too like get to know the person before you walk into the conversation don't mm-hmm. act like you already looked up all this stuff but in the mm-hmm. back of your head it's nice when you're hearing something like a second mm-hmm. time and you really understand somebody and um, mm-hmm. Still let them talk the whole time, of course, but yeah. And I think with that, re- with research, it's always good to like, they can sell you, but the more you, if you're creating a p- proposal and you can look into their website and you catch something that they might've been needing, but didn't, you know, failed to bring it up in conversation. Like you just showed your value plus 10 because you did the research. They didn't ask you to, and you found something that they're going to need and is, you know, doable within the time spending with them. Yeah. No, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, yeah. Let's jump to this one. So, um, we're talking with a local trainer, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, man, I mean, long story short, 
there's something coming out that you need to promote. Great opportunity for a video marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Chris video, myself marketing. So a lot of times when, you know, we're combining and someone needs both of us for a project, like it's a pretty big investment. And then you throw ad spend on top of it. There's a lot that goes into it. And uh, I don't know. I think on a high level, it's a situation of a couple things like somebody not truly understanding what they want and not understanding the value of investing mm -hmm. into services. Yeah. And something in that meeting, and this was like a red flag. I mean, Brady's radar went up right away and when he said it and um, he, I think I mentioned the video price. It might've been a thousand for that one. We'll say, but he goes, Oh, I have a buddy. He shot the last one for $250. And I remember looking at Brady and was like, well, I'm not doing it for 250. <laughs> and then I was looking at Brady after that meeting and was like, is that his way of saying like, that's his budget or is that truly? Cause I think my response was like, well, if his buddy did it for, and I think I even told him that, well, man, if he did it for 350, have him do it again. Yeah. No kidding. If it was good. Right. Or yeah. if he thinks it was good. And that is one of the most common techniques. It's like, Oh, I know somebody who does it for this or this. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are you talking to me then? Obviously, yeah. obviously they didn't do the best job in the world mm -hmm. and you needed somebody better. So understand that that's going to cost a little more. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious what the, the whole resolute was of that conversation. Cause I remember thinking, I was like in that sales meeting, I was like, I don't think he's going to book our service. I'd like to, cause this would be a fun project to work on. But then I was like, I just got a feeling that he's going to use somebody else or like maybe we're even creating the concept of what to shoot or we were the the creative visionaries for that that created what he had somebody else shoot for and that could always be the case too and i think that that's where i'm kind of shifting this to is like sometimes when you sell you shouldn't give all the script like that should be a part of the paid process rather than oh, on no. the front side because on that one we were like here's what we do da, da, da. and it was like okay cool well if they want to go work with somebody else we just gave them all of our ideas that they can run with so luckily there's karma so <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, well, and in that situation too, which is another thing, like, especially in your space that I'm sure you run into all the time, but it's either clients have no idea what they want in the video, or they have such a specific image for what the video looks like, which is what it was in his case. Mm -hmm. It, you know, kind of, he was all over the place, but he definitely had yeah. some very specific things in mind where yeah. it completely would hinder your creativity. And that's probably not mm -hmm. somebody you would want to work with anyway. Yeah, for me, I like the, uh, I always call it the frame. I'm always like paint your canvas, but we're going to have to have room to intuitively shift when stuff happens because I like, I like the construct of essentially like what they want to be conveyed, but how it's conveyed, I always like leave open to like, you know, whenever we, whenever we film, it's so cool how it happens, but we have a script and then something magical happens like somewhere in it. And we're like, whoa, let's turn a little bit. This just got really cool. Like then the, the ideas really start flowing. And then if we need to, we can always divert back to the script where it's like our checkpoint, but then it's always like having that freedom to like let creativity come in and like find that angle or that shot or do something that you never would have thought of. And it's like, whoa, that's when yeah. the magic happens. Totally. And it, that can happen when you're focused on like the objective, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not, you're not as stuck on the path to get there. So if you have a certain goal of like what you want to convey in a video, you can then allow yourself to be a little more creative of what it looks like and how you're going to get there. But, yeah. you know, be, be results driven, be focused on the end goal and, and not mm -hmm. as much on the little weeds along the way. Yeah, for sure. And then, and luckily that hasn't ever been a problem. So, I mean, that's always really, really nice, but that, that is a big part of my selling process is here's how I work. Uh, I want to make sure it works with you. And if it doesn't, we really need to figure out a way to navigate this so that we're both seen, heard, and can, you know, give our input in a very like constructive space or a safe space rather than one that's like, no, no, me, me. <laughs> no, so. it, again, it's like relationships are key because this happens all the time with clients where for me, for myself, um, for me, <laughs> for I, me. Uh, <laughs> like I'm very quick if something isn't working. Hey, I'm, I'm getting the client on the phone. Hey, this isn't working. We need to pivot to this. Mm -hmm. Don't let something drag on that isn't working. 
Yep. That's just going to cost everybody in the long run. It'll probably end that work relationship. But yeah. if you're honest and you have a good back and forth going with somebody, hey, a lot of everything really in business is A B testing, like mm -hmm. everything. You're testing, optimizing until you get the absolute best result. It's yeah. like that for everything. So there are going to be things that just don't work. And you yeah. just need to be honest about that. And it's, it's no big deal. Yeah. I mean, even with that whole optimizing statement right there, I think the important part of sales is uh, if you're starting and you're, you're new to this or you're testing a new product, don't go to your exact customer right away. Test it on some people to refine your pitch and your sales statement and get a couple no's and understand, like ask them like, why isn't this working? And then refine it before you go to your direct target. Yeah. And, and be honest about where you are too. Like mm -hmm. when I didn't have the skill sets of like every platform, I would always be honest about it. Like mm -hmm. if somebody asked, Hey, um, Oh, I don't know what, like LinkedIn. So like LinkedIn advertising, like that's still like relatively newish. I mean, I don't think people are fully taking advantage of it, but you know, sometimes people would ask, Hey, have you done this before? Back before I had, mm -hmm. you don't want to, I mean, a lot of times people say like fake it till you make it, but man, it, in some situations you really can't do that. Like you yeah. gotta be honest, like, Hey, I, I'm all for learning and trying that out with you, but understand here's where I'm at and I don't have the experience there yep. just so there are the proper expectations. And yeah. That, that's important too. I do. I do the same at the video. And I, I mean, I still do at this point, people ask if I do after effects or motion graphics and I'm always like, Nope, I am a hard cut shooter. I have my transitions and it's part of my style. But if you want after effects or motion graphics, I have people that I will hire behind me, but I want to make sure you like their work before I hire them. And I'm going to need a really clean objective of what you're wanting in after effects or motion graphics. So I can send over to make sure that they can do it before we start our end of the deal. Yeah, no, it's fair. I mean, you know, well, honesty is the best policy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And luckily, luckily I'm surrounded by a ton of creators. And I think that's an important part of selling is like, always try to bring those people in with you. Because even though like we're competing at the end of the day, the more we support one another, we can help lift one another up and go up with them. Because if somebody gets really good at this skill, you're really good at this skill. You guys can ping pong back and forth so much. But having those people and those friends that you can rely on that are, you know, in diverse skills than you is so important to your own selling process. Because now you have the, now you can like bring in your own friends into your business, which is really cool. Especially if you can pay them their rate and build them in with a project that you're doing, like that's that's the best part of selling, and that's how some like really cool, you know, business ideas even get started. So, yeah, love that, man. Anything else, or do we want to get into some recent projects? And yeah, what recent projects? Let's go, let's go. Recent projects. Yeah, for me, I had kind of an interesting call uh, this week. Okay. Um, I can't get into super specifics, but what I kind of pride myself on it, it's fun for me. Um, I'm, I'm a bouncing board, mm -hmm. like a brainstormer for clients and I'm all yeah. for it. You know, um, even though my lane isn't like everything online, mm -hmm. like some clients think it is like, if you're a digital marketer, that means you can do everything under the sun online. Oh Yeah. You know, I, I still have a good idea of just about everything, at least enough for a conversation. And uh, yeah, I I have a client that's dealing with uh, a designer issue, and uh, their their website is uh, going through some things right now. Dang. And um, it's it's funny. I mean, I'm almost in a situation where I'm talking them off a ledge, so to speak, where they're in a panic, like, oh, this designer's probably going to run off with my money. I haven't heard from them in so many days. And um, scary. yeah, it, but luckily, you know, I have uh, similar experiences over the years that I can kind of relate to a client and that's just like additional value, you know, mm -hmm. um, any little cherry on top that you can throw in the relationship and I know that since we have that level of trust that I'm in a good spot with that client. So mm -hmm. that's a good feeling to be in. And, um, you know, I always give sympathy and 
offer whatever I can to help the situation too. Because I, yeah, I definitely get some calls with clients in crisis, and yeah, navigating those is interesting. Always, but but that's an empathetic listening, and it's like if you're there outside of what you do, I can see how it can add more value. And who knows, it could get you a sale down the road too. Yeah, totally. I had a uh, so I booked a new client. I'm shooting for next week. Uh, this was a, a really cool deal. So reach out to me on Instagram, said they love my work. They love my style. They love my color grade. When they said they love my color grade, I was like, these people are cool because I've been really <laughs> focusing on my look. So, um, ended up having a text conversation that I was like, yeah, let's jump on a call and figure out exactly what you want. Jump on a zoom call with them and their original idea of what they were wanting for a video. I was like, I was like, well, you know, I really like your idea. Um, I, I can see kind of where you're going with that, but with this style, here's what I would recommend. And here would be the best way to, I think, market what you're marketing, showcase what you're talking about and involve the people that you want to involve in with it. Cause they were kind of drawn out this, like, it was like a kind of like going to be like a, in my mind, it was about a four minute long video. And I'm like, this is an ad. I was like, you guys, I, I know you, you feel like you're, you're giving people a lot and they're going to love it, but it's an, it's it's an ad. So you're taking people's time. You have to get the people engaged. You have to get them really excited and you have to do it in about a minute. If we can do it in a minute. We got a good shot, but if we can do it in 45 seconds, we really got this. But I, I, I did that mirror thing. I was like, I understand. I uh, see where you're wanting to go with it, but then like, here is what I would suggest. And here's why I would suggest it. And then they, they took it right away and were like, no, we love that. So then I, I found myself in writing a script with them a little bit, but I was like, here's the details of the script. Keep it really simple. You know, what are the people watching? Why do they care? How can you help them? Or how will it benefit their life? And what's your call to action? That is all you need. And then we need to show really cool stuff to keep them engaged. And then ended up uh, booking that one on Friday. And the booking process, this is actually really cool too for anybody in the content creation space or even on, on your side too. Or the marketing is like, it's somebody I hadn't worked with before and it was off social media. So the trust was there. It wasn't a hundred percent there because I hadn't worked with them before. So I sent him a uh, message and I was very, very polite on it because I didn't get it in the call. We had to end early, but it was like, <clears throat> here is my rate. Um, well, they knew my rate actually. So I was like, Hey, um, what's your email? I need to go ahead and send you an invoice to, you know, um, so I can save the days for the shoot. Or as soon as you pay the invoice, I'll set those dates aside to guarantee the shooting for you guys. Cause since yeah. I hadn't worked yeah. with them before, there's always that weird space between like, do yeah. they trust me? So I gave them a ton of value and did the meeting and got it all lined up and sprinkled in some extra. But then, like I said, that got cut short and I'm like, Oh crap, I haven't worked with them before. I need to make sure I get paid or they don't cancel last minute. And that was like a really direct and soft way to throw that in there. Hey, by the way, make sure this invoice is paid before the dates to guarantee you know, this date and this time, my availability and it worked. And dude, they, this is the quickest invoice I think I've ever had paid. And I was like, man, I'm loving this client already. But all this stuff from the past has literally taught me how to like package it and frame it. Cause the old me would have been like, Oh yeah, I'll just, uh, just, you know, uh, we'll get the invoice sent or like, Hey, you guys mind paying half? And you know, it's just like, Nope, here's my, here's my rate please pay this before April 18th and I'll make sure I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes. I mean, and I like how you said you gave some value too, because mm -hmm. if you're not in a situation where you know each other really well, like give them a little taste of what you can do, like personalized for their situation. And then, you know, did it kind of return the favor with, well, I don't know you that well. Going to need that invoice, you know, before we get yep. really rolling here. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's a fair back and forth. And I think that'll, that'll work out, man. That'll be a, For sounds sure. like a start to a good relationship to me. So yeah. yeah. And then, Hopefully and then the, well. the backside of that one too is really cool too. Cause I'm filming, but I'm supposed to edit as well. So then the, I'm making them pay for the filming a hundred percent up front. And then we can move to the editing process too, which on that end, then we'll have the video and then it'll be like, all right, here's the invoice for the editing before the video is fully delivered. Nice. Yeah. And that, and that helps too. I mean, mm -hmm they don't have to pay for everything up front. They're paying yep. for the initial start. Mm -hmm. And if they want editing, which they will. Yeah. 
pay for that but, at a later time. So. so then hypothetically for this project too, just to like circle back on what we were talking about, this whole sell could be about a $2,000 project, but now it's like 500 for filming. And then we got the second invoice for the rest of the filming and the video. So yep. now I got that first sell. We got the yes, show up, deliver. If we have to on that one, maybe stay a little bit late you know, hold that boundary, but also give a little bit, show them that we really care and have some fun on the project and then hit post. Great. Start editing. You know, I edit, I edit quick, but it's like, you know, editing sometimes gets more expensive to people. So when they hear that number all together, they're like, whoa, but when you break it up and you deliver and you build that trust and they're just like, whatever, it'll work out. No, hundred percent. And, um, uh... Yeah, it, it's fun navigating the the initial start of a new business relationship. I feel like both sides are walking on eggshells a little bit, but you know, sure. the more conversations you have, you know, it'll yep. all build. Yeah, I'd say that and always being open and vulnerable, like even being so authentic and just so true and just always just, you know, not hiding anything. Just like you said, be honest, be direct. And if you can't do something, tell them, but also tell them, you know, what you can do outside of what they're asking Bam. That sounds like a good message to end on. That sounds like a good <laughs> clip. We're going to put that one on LinkedIn next week. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. Um, Yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope people are watching on uh on the socials too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're kind of everywhere at this point. Um, yeah, I everywhere. know for me, it's uh, heavy Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, but... Uh, yeah, pretty much anywhere. I, I've thrown some tweets out there too. I'm not a big tweets? tweeter, but they're I out gotta, there. I got to get into Twitter more. Dan Coe's all about tweeting, but I'm like, you know, this is a Chris Douglas show. So if you want to learn more about Chris Douglas, please check out buychris.io where Damn. you can get videos created for you that generate you more revenue. And if you're a part-time creator making one to $5,000 and want to learn how to become a full-time creator, sign up on my website for a one-on-one -on -one discovery call with me and I'll teach you how to get there in six to 12 months. Man, see that sell? No, but for real, that that one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching is working really well for one of my clients. And I can't wait to pull him in one of these conversations with us maybe to see. Uh, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, because he's he's actually in a really good spot where I think uh, we could really just tag team and help him. So I'm starting to help him with some video stuff just to get him rocking and rolling a little bit more. But it's cool. Heck yeah. Yeah, I love that. It's fun watching you pull all that stuff off. I think you're, you're built for coaching. Um, yeah. I, I like but, that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. And for me, just go to braddogmedia.com, B-R-A-D-D-O-G media.com. Everything's in the description as usual. So check it out. Book a call with me. I am an easy guy to get a hold of. And uh, right. I have some cool case studies on there too. If you want to check out some past work and I'm always open for a chat. Man, I love that. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for watching and have a great week.